Hi guys, thank you for your patience as we were trying to figure this out. So what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to grab the link and paste it in our other chat so um, we can get everybody in to one location <laughs> for first day of classroom, yay! Um, let's see how people end up coming in here. Really do appreciate your patience, guys. Okay. And let's see. Hmm. So it looks like we need to add the URL to the chat. Hmm. Here we go, here we go. Oh, technology. All right, looks like Anita's in there. Hi, Anita. We're gonna open up the chat here. Um, and I'm guessing we're gonna be maxed out, so um, we'll just go ahead and see how many people we end up getting in there. Hi, Karima. Nice to see you. Thanks for your patience. All right. And Jonathan's here. You can go ahead and just mute out as you come on in. Um, and that way we won't have too much interference. So Anita, should we get started since we're a few minutes behind schedule? Oops, maybe use a chat. Oh, it's nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, I'm going to get started because I want to make sure we get through some of this content. Let's do it. Okay, so let me do a uh, screen share. And I'm going to go ahead and hop on over to my slide deck. You'll have to excuse this, the craziness of uh, all my tabs being open. Um. Double check this goes through. Are we able to see that? Is everybody able to see that? Feel free to unmute and just let me know. Okay, so um, I am so excited to be able to share with you some of my favorite components of Google Classroom. Um, for those of us that are starting on day one, and then those of us that have already gotten started and kind of want to know what to do next. So my name is Kate Tolnight, and I work um, for Q, uh, which is a nonprofit for innovation in education here in California. And I have spent uh, 10 years teaching middle school, um, mostly English and history, and then fell in love with educational technology and was able to work with um, teachers and administrators throughout the state um, in a, at both the district and county levels as an administrator. Um, and I'm a Google certified teacher and innovator and educator and absolutely love googly things. So it's such an honor to be able to share with you all today. So um, first off, I just want to, I just want to kind of break the ice when it comes to um, what classroom actually is. And um, 
So one of the things that I love about Classroom is that it is instant and paperless. And I think that those two go hand in hand with adding to its simplicity. So um, I have often found that there's power when you're in front of um, a group of people, either adults or children that you're teaching, and an idea comes to mind or a resource that wants to be, or you find a resource that you want to share and you want to instantly get this out to people. And that's what Classroom really allows you to do. It allows you to move forward in that paperless format and, and really leverage all the digital resources that are around us. Um, the simplicity factor has to do with the fact that we really only have three options for sharing inside of Classroom. You can create an assignment, um, which probably is is the most commonly used re, um, commonly used aspect of classroom and one of what I believe to be the the secret sauces of classroom um, especially the feature that allows you to make a copy for every student um, uh, besides making an assignment you can make um, an announcement which is more just like one-way communication with a thread of comments if you allow it and then you have the option to add a question, and that lets you pull the students in real time. Like if a conversation was happening, again, going back to that instant piece, conversations happening in class, and you want to be able to uh, take, a, take a feel for the room and find out what people are doing and feeling, then that's a nice way to do it. Um, and all of that leads to this idea of innovation. And, and I think Classroom in itself is pretty innovative because it has simplified the workflow and allowed teachers and educators to think about how they want to educate, um, what they want to share, rather than, than worrying about that technology piece. One of the first things we're going to talk about is just getting your class set up. Um, and you'll notice that if you go to classroom.google.com and you log in, you have this option to either join class or create class. Now, it has been my, in my experience, it has been much more of a smoother process to have users join class rather um, with a code. Um, however, this is the same interface if you were gonna create your class, you would select create class. But both the, uh, anybody who enters into Classroom is going to see the option underneath that plus sign for join class or create class. Now, one very cool development that has come out recently is that um, this join code, which is jibber jabber, letters and numbers of all shapes and sizes, um, and unique to each classroom, that used to be really difficult to see in kind of the sidebar of one of your pages on your classroom. And now what um, the classroom team has developed is this full screen ability so you can project, as you see in this image, you can project that code um, much larger for students to just go ahead and quickly get in. And, and you won't believe how saving 30 seconds or 45 seconds here or there on this join code process, and that's for kids that are used to it. it, it it's so much simpler. Um, definitely something to think about, especially as you are working in younger students who are still really trying to hunt and pack the letters out and to have them hunt and pack and actually look at teeny tiny little letters on the screen was no fun. So this is a huge um, gift that the classroom team has given our community. Um, so this is really, Again, one of my favorite components of Classroom is the automaticity behind it. So um, there's, it's really important that we all respect the Classroom folder that automatically is created for us inside of our drive. So let me back up a little bit. When you as a teacher begin your Classroom, um, what will happen inside of Drive is a, a folder titled Classroom will be created. You don't do it, Google does it. Inside of that folder are all the titles of your classrooms. So as you can see in this picture, we have period one, period two, period three. So these are individual classrooms inside of this teacher's um, dashboard. Once you kind of work out your workflow within classroom, copies um, and templates of your assignments and your um, and information that's submitted to you is going to fall into the right place inside of Classroom. And that's why in, inside of your drive. 
That's why I have this red exclamation point. Be careful. Beware of that folder. I, a lot of teachers find that, oh, there's this classroom folder. I'll just start putting everything for classroom inside my classroom folder. And while that might seem like a good idea, I give, I, you know, consider this fair warning that I, um, I have found it to be best practice to just let that folder be and let Google do its magic. Autom it's auto magic really inside of that folder um that being said if you do put stuff in there not the end of the world it's just things kind of separated things kind of separated oh is someone talking there i'm sorry you might want, whoever this wonderful human is might want to mute because it's coming through a little bit like a robot. And just so you know, Anita from the Google team is watching the chat right now. Um, and so at towards the tail end, we'll be jumping back into those questions. I just double check that live feed, make sure we're doing okay over there. Okay, Miguel, would you mind just muting for me? Okay, perfect. Here we go. Thanks for your patience, everyone. All right. On our way. Oh yeah. So, like I said, please feel free to use the chat feature. Um, I'm not sure if Anita's doing double chats right now <laughs> in both the links, but we'll we'll get to Q and A at the end of this. So um, I've done I've done training on classroom a lot of times. Is that is there an echo? Is that part of the issue? Okay. So some setup tips that I have for you is to start a new classroom for each subject. Sometimes teachers think that. Um, like their physical four walls of a classroom, they should have one classroom and then put all their work inside of it. But really, if you think of each Google Classroom as its own folder inside of your drive, it makes a lot more sense that you would have an individual classroom for an individual subject. And so, and some people break it down even further to specific units of study, depending on if they're secondary teachers and they just really want to keep things organized like that. Um, but definitely start that new classroom for each subject. Um, there's that tip again. Let Google fill your classroom drive folder all by itself. Don't mess. Be, be respectful of that folder. I am like so respectful of the work that happens in there all, all by the help of Google. Um, then... Another thing you can do is customize the color and the, um, the header images for your classrooms. And so I recommend doing that, one, because when you go to the dashboard, you're going to be able to help your students and yourself quickly navigate to um, the correct classroom based on that color coding. So I think it's a nice idea, it's kind of thoughtful, to add that um, color and add a unique header to each of your classrooms. Just helps you know, expedite the access process. Perfect. Okay, so um, I said this earlier and I'll say it again. Classroom to me is kind of the epitome of a workflow solution. So what that means, oh, those images didn't come through, but in short, what that means is that you can create assignments, you can track and grade students' work, you, you can email summaries for parents and guardians. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. When, when, when it comes to assigning work to students, one of the features that was rolled out in the spring of last year, or this year, sorry, was that you could actually select the individual students to get certain assignments within a classroom. And that was a huge deal because um, just take a moment to think about how many times you've done group work and you've wanted to give certain resources to certain students. Or maybe you're focusing on differentiation and you know that there's certain resources that are going to be helpful to certain students, but you don't want to call them out. You don't want to, you, you want it to be relatively seamless and respectful of, of their, um, oops, respectful of um, their privacy and their interests. And so this is a really exciting way to differentiate, to streamline small group work, um, and really continue to meet the needs of 
your students and your learners um, in real time. Um, so when it comes to your assignments, I have a couple more suggestions for you. One would be title your assignments starting with a number um, or some sort of protocol because what happens is each of these assignments are alphabetically organized inside of the classroom folder in Drive for both the students and for you. And so it's a lot easier to go through and to say to students, oh, I need you to work on assignment number three or I need you to work on assignment 20 versus um, having to go through and remember the exact titles um, or having them go, oh, is this the one, Miss? Is this the one you were talking about? So titling, you know, really being specific and unique with your titles is important. And then coming up with some sort of title protocol I think is really helpful as well. Um, and let's see, I might have gone out of order there. Um, nope. So there are there is a grading feature inside of Classroom, which a lot of teachers have really come to love. And I've seen some, some exciting developments inside of there. Um, what I would suggest, though, there's been some hiccups. If there's a teacher who has totally gotten into the classroom grading features, but is also expected to be adding grades into like a site or district adopted um, system. So that's something to really consider is talk to your team, whether it's your grade level team or subject team or your site team, and find out how the classroom grading features connect to grading programs that you're expected to use at your site because um, nobody wants double work and classroom's all about efficiency. So we don't want to double do it if we don't have to or else or if we're going to you know be expected to get information in there. But there's some really exciting export features so you can grade inside a classroom and export it to Google Sheets and run all those fun scripts and add-ons. Um, but just make sure that as a team, you guys are very clear as to what your purpose is for using those features. So I shared with you guys earlier that my um, classroom experience was primarily in middle school with the stint in the high school. Um, and going as low as kindergarten for some computer classes, but um, I have spent the last five years really focused on using Classroom for professional learning. And when I was working with the Google team with Anita to prep for today, I, I asked, do you think I could just share how powerful Google Classroom is for professional learning? Um, and she and the team were like, yes, do it, do it. So um, what's, what's really important here is when leaders um, whether you're site leaders or district leaders or teacher leaders, when you model a classroom for other educators, you have no idea the impact that that has on actual implementation with students. And so I like to think of classroom as an opportunity to model really good teaching and to let people know that there are tons of ways that you can take um, Google Classroom and quote unquote, hack it to be whatever you need it to be. This is an example of a, a book club um, that I started over the summer and I using topics and um, inviting other moderators into this Google Classroom. Um, and this was one, this was a public Google Classroom, so it wasn't within a domain. We were able to bring almost 30 educators together around these different books that they were reading for professional learning and we were able to award badges and celebrate learning and create these artifacts of um, and evidence of, of really important thinking as professionals. And it was a really exciting project. But one of the other things I wanted to share um, was how I love the ability that Classroom has to, to app smash with other iOS apps. Um, so, I am uh, an, an iPhone user and an iPad user. And so when I was preparing for today, I came to this part with that lens, which, which is the simplicity that um, the developers have created in designing resources on certain apps and actually being able to share directly to Classroom. And so, um, the four apps that I thought were particularly exciting for this, and 
relatively um, like a, not a high learning curve, not a steep learning curve, um, is photos, voice memos, Chrome, and the Seesaw class. So photos and voice memos, those are apps that actually come by default on your iOS device. Chrome, you want to install, um, and Seesaw class is another one you would want to install. So I'll just go through and explain to you by clicking on this link here. I'm going to take you into my public facing classroom. And this is my sandbox. So I call this my sandbox playground because I like to try new things. I like to see how integrations work. And sometimes they work really smoothly, and a lot of times they don't. But I can play in here, and this doesn't impact any of the teachers or students that I work with. Um, this first example, and this is the teacher view, but this first example was just me creating um, an announcement. And I was sharing of both a video and an image from my camera roll. And it really happened instantaneously. So you can see that there's a picture of my son on his first day of kindergarten um, that I took on my phone and then I was able to share directly to classroom. Here's a little video that I made using, oh, let's see if it comes through, using Boomerang. And actually, this is the app smash part of it because I actually used um, Boomerang. <laughs> and Snapchat to lay over some of this text and some of those words, and then uh, saved it to my camera roll and was able to share it to Classroom. So right then and there, I mean, I hope you're starting to see that Classroom is really a vessel of all sorts of innovative learning and, and ways that you can bring excitement and creativity um, from your students to the larger class um, by just a few clicks. Uh, another one is voice memos. Now, um, podcasting and audio recording, um, those are all really, really powerful um, powerful ways to capture uh, real-time processing of information. And, and so much of what we do now is we think about process just as much as we think about product. And so by using the voice memo app on my phone, um, and sharing it directly to Google Classroom, you're going to see So that was just a little voice memo. We made a 15 second voice memo super fast at a conference that Lindsay and I were at. And I went into the voice memos, I found it, and I sent it directly to Google Classroom. Again, think about the possibility of leveraging audio production in this way and not worrying about the perfect end product, but really honoring the process. Um, another example, uh, and these are all announcements, by the way. Um, I didn't go through the process of assigning it. But another example here is um, sharing a link directly from Chrome. So it's it's if you're on your iOS device and you have a link um, in your Chrome account, you can share directly to Classroom, and it's going to, again, instantly and quickly uh, get a link directly to the community, your classroom community, or whoever's in your group. And then finally, if you are using Seesaw, which a lot of classrooms are, um, and, and kind of living in this world of Seesaw and Google Classroom, I have found that um, there's been a desire to see how the two play together. And so this is actually uh, an artifact that was uploaded into Seesaw. Um, this is one of my son's art projects from last year. And I was able to grab it in Seesaw, share it directly to Classroom, and you can see it has the commentary right there at the bottom. It prompts you to sign into Seesaw. So again, it just really allows you as the, as the teacher, as, as the instructional leader in your classroom, to be in charge of um, you know, what platforms you want to use and, and how you want to leverage all the different resources that are in our fingertips. So here's where I'm going to stop for any questions and clarification. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to give you my face because let's do that. And were there any questions from people? Anything you wanted me to go over?
Anita, anything you would want to add before we were to wrap this up? Oh, I can't hear you. Do you want to go ahead and put it in the chat? I would I would say this. It's interesting because I spent time in the classroom. Um, I spent time in the classroom without Google Classroom in my fingertips. <laughs> so I um, am excited for all of you who have the ability to leverage this amazing resource and to think about how it can simply be that workflow solution. Um, and not be the end all be all of your teaching, but just be the way that you get information to and from your learners. Um, it is it is just a, a fantastic solution and I am excited to share it and happy to be a resource for people as you think about how you might want to use it for your for, uh, educators or adults that you work with. Um, just wonderful. So um, it doesn't look like we have any follow up questions. So I think on that note, Anita, unless you can think of anything else, I think we might wrap. Oh, she says, thank you so much, Kate. Nothing on my end. Awesome. OK. Well, everybody, enjoy the beginning of school and um, keep on taking those risks. Please stay connected. I'll go ahead and put up my um, contact information, and maybe that's how we can end it. Uh, please do stay connected. I, I love um, hearing happy stories and working through tricky ones with you. And um, as soon as this loads and my contact information pops up, there you go. All right, everybody have a wonderful rest of your week, and thanks for jumping in.